One of the areas of blockchain that I'm most passionate about is how blockchain will radically transform video games in the coming years. Blockchain brings ownership and value capture by the players in ways that was never possible before. Now, what do I mean by value capture? Well, imagine this. Imagine way back in 2003 when World of Warcraft launched that they had sold, say, land for the game. And you bought some land in an area that later became super populated. And you didn't just buy that land, but you owned that land as, say, an NFT. Well, the game then attracted millions and millions of players and that land would have a value. And let's say it does have that value. And down the road, that land has an extreme value. And you could then sell that land and capture the value from it. Or perhaps you had become really good at forging swords and you had perfected your sword crafting skills and you were one of the few that could make the top level swords. And these sold at a high premium because so few had developed the skills in the game to make such high level swords and your job was literally making and selling swords in a video game. That is going to be possible. But that did never happen in World of Warcraft because all video game value was trapped and the only ones making money from it were the game developers but what if there was a way through blockchain to give you ownership to where value could be earned and made by the player and the game maker could also become very rich as or or more rich than any game maker in history by creating a game to where people love to come and play because not only is it fun but it has real extractable value there that is where blockchain gaming is going and where traditional games are totally missing it. Today we have joining us the CEO of a game and a blockchain that I think gets it. Do note I'm highly biased towards this blockchain and the game. I invest a lot of funds in the blockchain and work as an advisor to the game, but there are very strong reasons why it attracted my investment and my time into Devio and LitCraft and what they're doing. And I love the direction that Tom has taken both Devio and especially LitCraft. So we're limited on time. We'll talk just a touch about Devio, but most of the questions will be focused on their game LitCraft. Welcome everyone to the Crypto Rain channel and our family. Let's jump right into the interview. And I want to if you haven't already, make it rain on that like button and strap in for the show as Tom joins us. Also, do note, none of this is financial advice. Tom, thanks so much for joining us. Great. Thanks for having me, as always. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate it. You've joined us a number of times, but it's been a while and you've had some massive, massive updates to LitCraft that I wanted you to share. And I was really blown away when I... I we we talked over a call a couple months ago and you were showing me all the updates that were coming out and that what is now released in LitCraft. Um, but for those that don't know LitCraft, could you give us an overview of what LitCraft and LitCraft and experience particularly is? Sure. Yeah, so uh, I liked your introduction kind of leading into the discussion today. Um, I think play to own is going to be a huge category in the entire video games industry. Um, you know, when you when you look back at, you know, kind of milestones in the video game industry along the way, there was, you know, in the early days, you just bought a cartridge or then ultimately a CD-ROM. Um, then kind of early 2000s, there was uh, MMOs where you bought a subscription. Um, the app stores came, came out in kind of the late 2000s, um, and that started opening free-to-play games. So one of the big models now is um, uh, just free-to-play games where you buy skins and things like that. And, and I think when you look at those big milestones, play to own, as opposed to play to earn, but play to own, where you own the assets in the in the game, is another of these big categories that's going to drive the video game industry. And I think once people have played a video game for a while, and and then all the every everything that they earn in the game they own outside of the game's context. Once you've played that way, you're never going to go back to the old way of playing. It's going to become table stakes. So that's where I describe it as kind of a fundamental um, change, a, a fundamental transition in the entire video game industry, not just blockchain gaming. So our, our game, um, LitCraft Experience, 
is a game that's built around that philosophy, around this play to own, you know, concept and the idea that you can earn. A lot of the the early games in the in the blockchain gaming space were, you know, kind of described as play to earn. You know, so I think earning is a part of it, right? If you own the assets, you can sell them. Um, but but really, the main concept is this play to own, where, which is what Nesperience is, is again built around. So you you go into Nesperience, and it, it it mimics a lot of the different kinds of gameplay that are tried and true and proven. So the kind of initial gameplay is similar to Minecraft, where you go and you start digging out items. Um, then then it expands into other uh, what we call earning games um, that are also big genres. So things like Match Three, like Candy Crush Saga. Um, there's a, a merge game that's kind of like merge dragons or ever merge you know which are another popular genre on mobile um there's games that are just kind of simple like fruit you know popping game um, but then there's other kind of classics like solitaire or sudoku um games that you know many millions of people have played many millions of hours right they're again tried and true proven games and so anybody can come in and find the gameplay that they like play and earn items that they own outside of the game's context. And then the other thing that Nesperience does that I think is unique in, in the gaming industry and the blockchain gaming space is that it ties all of those interactions together. So Nesperience to me is less about a specific game and more about creating a digital financial ecosystem, an ecosystem where everybody's interactions all coordinate into a much larger ecosystem financial ecosystem that has a lot of flow between items so for example if you if you play sudoku um, you earn accounting points and those accounting points can be used in a business or if you run into our our new kind of like 3d land lit land where you can run around you can do quests get items and then those items you can craft with items that you played solitaire to get and you craft items from different places to get more and more sophisticated and valuable and complex items. So, so Liquor from the Experience ties all of these different types of tried and true and proven game uh, concepts into one big financial ecosystem. So that's, that's kind of the main point and summary of it. Yeah, it's fascinating all the integrations that you have that allow for specialization. So people can play the types of things that they're interested in that earn certain components and become really good at them. Like, um, the the pickaxe crafting, right? Some people have gotten so good at that. Like I only get so far. And so I realized that's okay. I'm just going to buy from the higher level pickaxes that some people have gotten really good at making because yeah, the amount of time it would take me to get there, it, it's actually just less expensive for me as far as the value of my time to buy a high level pickaxe from somebody that's learned how to do it and it's exceptionally good. And make those uh, yeah. and so you have all kinds of specialization because the picks pickaxe is just one of the what's growing into hundreds of areas that, of specialization yeah our users who have been we, we have a really solid user base um you know a good solid number of daily active users that that really are kind of creating the foundation for i think where we're going to be growing and it's a great group of folks i interact with them almost daily and um, when we released our version four release, V4, so, so LitCraft and Experience has been around for, I think, five years now. It's, it's I, I think, the longest running blockchain game. You know, so it's been running for a long time. For most of its time, it was a test bed for our blockchain, the DevX blockchain. Uh, but then after Axie, Axie Infinity exploded, we saw a big opportunity. And so we, we launched it as its own product, um, and, and it's been going great. And we've been continuing to grow and expand it. So it was our users that have been playing after we launched V4, which is the, the version that we launched on Earth Day this year, April 22nd, is the first version that really focuses around this digital financial ecosystem. And I see that really as the future of where the company is headed overall. And, and people have been playing it and they're like, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't want to do that. And, and I get on and I'm like, that's kind of the point. Like you, the game has gotten so expansive that you can't do everything. And it's like real life. You know, if you're, if you're a baker, you know, creating a bakery, you don't go and plow your own field and grow your own wheat, right? You just buy a bag of flour. You don't, you know, become get a legal degree you hire a lawyer you don't get an accounting degree you hire an accountant right and so all the things you need to do to run your business you focus on what you want to focus on you're a baker so you you know create baked goods and then you let other people do the things that they like and so so it's really kind of analogous to real life in, in that sense yeah do you mind sharing with people some of what you're talking about so they can start to picture those obviously we have some people in the chat 
that might be somewhat familiar with it. I know some of my community has been deep into playing it. In fact, they've followed it since its first launch, and some haven't really seen it yet. Um, yeah, yeah, I can share. Perfect. Um, all right, so here, let me uh, let me bring it up. Okay. Okay. So you're able to see it? There we go. Okay, good. So this is the, the Minecraft type of the gameplay um, that you first start out. And so you start out and you get these tasks, and the tasks take you kind of step by step through the game. As you finish the tasks, you complete them, and then you can see the completed tasks so that you get the real kind of basic ones. They teach you how to craft, um, teach you how to interact with our community, how to grow different types of magical equipment in the in the merge game, um, how to grow a business, you know, thing, things like that, right? So, so the very first kind of initial tasks are you start digging out through the, the land, and then... Um, as you start digging out, you'll find uh, these red gems. And then you can use the red gems to play one of the earning games. Um, and so as you start collecting things, you complete a couple of the tasks, and then you can go into these various earning games. And again, a lot of them are just kind of classic um, earning games, or classic video games that people love to play. Um, so here's a, a game, and I was kind of midway in it. So this is a, a game where you can um, this is the pickaxe game you were talking about, um, where you you slide things until you can kind of get things lined up how you want to get them lined up. Okay, so move that guy there. Let's see if we can. And one of the tricks on this I found, you know, different people have different strategies, is kind of keep the um, the highest level item up here, but you don't have to do it that way. So if I put that there, here, oh, okay, and then... Then this four can slide into this four, and eventually I can turn this into six and kind of work it up. But again, there's different different strategies, mm -hmm. and there's people that are really good at this game. So you can get up to a level uh, eleven pickaxe is really tough. Um, Twelve, you know, or only a few people can get. Then there's even a thirteen and a fourteen, and there's a couple people in our community who can get thirteens, and nobody's gotten a fourteen yet. Um, but I think it's mathematically possible. And then, then you can come into the red gems game, and you lay out these red gems and and a different type of gameplay. You can kind of build these up. Um, there's a game where you can build different kinds of magic. Um, so you have this magic emitter, and then you can kind of build up, um, you know, higher and higher level magic. So now we have red, yellow body magic. And then, then you can combine two yellows to get green. Ultimately, you can red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then white. You know, so it takes a while to get the highest level magic. Um, you know, like ten minutes to kind of get one of each. This game also has different kinds of coins that you can earn. So, physical magic and scene magic uh, creates <laughs> attraction. Physical and scene, you know, creates attraction. That makes sense, right? And then, and then it's a pretty deep game. So there's many different levels of these kinds. So attraction and fate, no. Attraction and kindness, fate and kindness, no. Those don't make a match. So you can you can go through and you can try to find um, uh, so integrity, um, physical and spiritual creates love. Love and integrity doesn't make anything right. So you could go through and kind of build these and these coins you can use to craft. Um, we've got this merge game. This this merge game is one of kind of the more uh, in-depth games we've got. So you can you can build out. Um, so you just merge five different things at a time. So here we've got four keys and you put a fifth key on. And then here we've got four of these kind of keys. We just made these two. So now you can create these two kind of keys. And so you merge, you know, deeper and deeper type of things. Then ultimately you get these rune stones as you merge, you know, the, the boxes, you ultimately get this key four and you get a, a, a box four. They turn into rune stones. Rune stones unlock the map. And so rune stones um, let give you land points and land points unlock these. So I don't have any land points right now, but here I can I can collect one of these. Now I've got some land points, and now I can start 
unlocking the land and you you unlock the land and eventually get up to um where you can start crafting amulets and then you can craft you can get into these other lands you can craft um swords and wands and things and then you can sell those on the business so so then a, a couple of the big you know concepts then is you can build different kinds of businesses um, Officiant is a manufacturer. Um, mining you use with the mining items that you, you gather. Um, there's a couple different types of mining plots. There's a, a business plot where you can get other other types of really kind of more valuable metals once you start a, a mining business. Um, and you could sell those in your mining business. And then you have to get other kinds of items like Gion, Freshwater. So Gion is energy, Freshwater, Opsonaut is really kind of marketing points that we use to then grow and expand the community. Um, and then and then you can level up these businesses as well. So this is a level zero kind of gig business. Um, if you get up to a level one mining business, then you start to need accounting and, and, um, uh, and legal points. Um, again, just like a, a real life business. And then uh, then you can uh, create this manufacturing business. We just just put this out where uh, we had it in the designs for V4, but it's been, we've been working out some kinks. So the community is just first starting to do it. So in this business, instead of kind of earning heptals in game currency, you can craft specific items. Um, you know, so I'm kind of jumping around between different things, but I'm showing some of the different you know concepts mm -hmm. in the game, and then then we've got again just kind of classic uh, games as well. So if you like Sudoku, you can just come in and just play Sudoku, right? So uh, one on this row, a one on this row, which means there's one in this row can't be this one, so that one is a one, right? And then you can one one that one's a one, and this is kind of an easy level. We have medium and hard levels as well. Um, and so you can play Sudoku, and then in Sudoku, again, you learn earn accounting points. If you get it finished quick enough, then you actually earn expertise tokens. Um, and then, then one of the, the big games that we have is our Heptone Battle. And so the Heptone Battle um, is a card battling game. Um, and you can craft lit pets you know in you know, on the blockchain so you, you actually craft them on on the blockchain and then and then as you craft them they've got characteristics they got powers they've got attack defense you know classic um you know battling you know types of of things um actually i think i ran into a, a problem so let me um let me uh, restart that um so here i'm gonna so while you're working on that, I wanted to Top show sharing and reshare. Oh, go ahead. You can while, show the while you're pulling that back up. Um, do you mind if I share? So what is all of this running on? So there's a lot of interactions here. What blockchain are you running LickCraft on? Yeah, so this is the DevX blockchain. And so um, I founded Devio, just a quick, you know, background on, on my history. Um, I, I'm an experienced entrepreneur. Uh, my first business was a robotics business. And then in that business, I raised about $34 million, took the company public, um, created the world's first consumer 3D touch device. And with that, got into the video game industry. So a lot of my career was in the video game space. In the video game space, I licensed about $100 million of video game development that we sold and published that worked with our hardware device. Um, and to make a long story short, sold our IP to Facebook. So that was my first business. Um, my second business is Devio. Started Devio uh, seven, eight years ago. I saw enormous opportunity in the blockchain space. To me, blockchain is one of the few technologies that we'll see in our lifetime that fundamentally changes computing on par with the internet. Um, you know, where the internet was a disruptive platform that lets people transfer data, blockchain is a disruptive platform that lets people transfer value. And if you look at it at that most basic level, that's where we saw world changing implications. So, so my my company now, I'm the CEO of Devio, created the DevX blockchain, and it's it can process millions of transactions per second. We're you know, millionths of the cost of Ethereum, um, billionths of the energy usage of Bitcoin. Um, and we've built a RESTful API into it where anybody, any of the world's 25 million web developers can instantly integrate just using HTTP POST commands. Like any any web developer can instantly integrate with our blockchain. Um, and so the, the sum is that, and, and then the last thing about our blockchain is we have a sharding algorithm where that's different from sharding and anything else. It's very different from Ethereum's sharding, for example. And in our sharding, we can create any number of new blockchains or independent blockchains called shards, and we can customize those shards to a particular use case. So that's the thing that we do that nobody else in the blockchain space does. And when you combine that with our speed and our cost, 
and our throughput, and then especially the ease of integration, any customer that comes to us can say, we want to run a block blockchain application. We want to use blockchain for the things that blockchain does well. We can spin up a shard for them, customize it to their application use, and have their re regular web team, their regular development team, easily integrate with it. And no other blockchain can do that. So, so it's a really powerful you know, blockchain technology. Yeah, do you mind if I share this is a video that you recently released that kind of does a really quick overview and I think it explains everything really well. Sure, that sounds great. So I'm not able to hear it myself. Uh, is, in the audience, are you guys able to hear this? This is live. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Tom's saying he can't hear it. I might have to. There's a different way I can add it if not. Um, Justin has a comment. Wait till Minecraft gets on chain. Um, actually, we're going to cover something like that. Okay, no sound on the video range. So something I messed up. Let's see. While well, you're figuring that out too, I can kind of show the heptone battle. Um, so. Yeah, let me add your thing back in. I do have this. Should this will have sound this time? Yeah, that'll work this time. Okay. Enables the transfer of. Well, sorry about what was that? Yeah. Uh, um, go ahead. You yeah. mind if I play this real quick while you're yeah, pulling up the good. heptone val battle? Yeah. Value. The ability to transfer digital value makes blockchain technology arguably one of the single greatest breakthroughs in computing. However, since its inception, it's been severely limited in speed, scale, and scope, making it impossible for enterprise businesses to harness its true value. But all that's about to change. Meet DevX. Up until now, the current architecture of Layer 1 blockchains has been a single main net that records all of the data created by its users on a single chain. This means there is only one path where all transactions must flow, leading to congestion and added cost. DevX, however, is an entirely new type of blockchain. Thousands of independent blockchains or shards exist on the DevX network. These shards can instantly connect through our highly secure cross-shard mechanism. So when, for example, Alice sends Bob a payment, it's actually traveling instantly from the shard Alice's wallet is located on, directly to Bob's wallet on his separate blockchain. The DevX cross-shard connection creates the path between the two wallets in an instant, with state-of-the-art security. It also creates consensus with all other shards. This innovative design means that a wallet can be held in any shard across the world, be used for any purpose, and nearly instantly settle with any other wallet at a fraction of the cost of other blockchains. The design also enables DefEx to settle transactions using one three billionth the current energy and CO2 consumption of Bitcoin, making DevEx's environmental impact negligible. DevEx's unique architecture provides a flexibility and speed not achievable on other layer ones. For example, when it's time to scale, much like a cloud service, we can spin up as many new shards as a project requires. If one shard can handle a thousand transactions per second, two shards can handle 2000 transactions per second. Developers can simply add as many shards as needed for any given scale. Devio has implemented its cross shard mechanism in benchmark tests with over 8 million cross shard transactions per second. Integration is a breeze with DevX because transactions are actually created with a traditional web to restful API. This means any one of the world's 25 million web developers can instantly and easily integrate the DevX blockchain to create powerful Web3 applications. The DevX sharding architecture, RESTful API, and consensus algorithm makes the DevX layer one blockchain not only the fastest blockchain in the world, but also shockingly cost-effective, infinitely scalable, and most of all, interoperable for everyone. It's time for a truly unblocked blockchain. It's time for DevX. Powerful video, Tom. That uh, beautiful video that really encapsulates it all the way down into three minutes. 
Yeah, Adam on our team uh, handled that and did a great job on it. it. Really came out well. I was excited when I first saw it myself. Now, here's the question. I remember, gosh, it was like three years ago where my friend was telling me about Devio, and he said, "Oh, it's this company that does has a blockchain that can do eight million transactions per second. And there was like this massive disbelief in me that's like, wait, it can do eight million transactions per second, and I've never heard of them. I said, look, I, I've been knee deep in this space for three years. I would have heard of it. There's no way it can do that many transactions per second because at the time the fastest was about 10,000 transactions per second. I said, there's no way. I, I guess I can't say there's no way. Perhaps there is, and I'm open to that. But I, I have to talk to the team because I just don't believe it. Have you run into yeah. that? Yeah, we've gotten that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that's actually been one of the the big barriers to us growing is we were so far ahead of where others were, it just didn't seem real. And things that don't seem real in the blockchain space usually aren't, right? Um, in our case, you know, I, I'm a traditional entrepreneur, have a lot of entrepreneurial experience. Everybody on our team, we have a world-class team. Um, you know, VCs that have invest, invested billions of dollars into tech, people that have run, you know, global companies, um, all kind of advisors on the team and a really, really impressive team. And so, you know, we, we're a group that's built real things and, and done real things. And so we took we took a really kind of um, real business model, you know, uh, uh, perspective in the blockchain space. Actually, here's a good example. One, one of the very first things I, I did is I started looking and like, you know, the blockchain space has these huge problems, not only in scalability and interactivity and ease of use and integration, but also things like um, uh, fraud, theft and loss, privacy, things like that. And, and at the time, nobody in the blockchain space was worried about privacy. Um, you know, and so, you know, blockchain in general, the, the philosophy of it was it's open, anybody can come in and run it, you have decentralized governance, um, and, and it was built around an anti-establishment, you know, down with government. But, you know, privacy is something that's implemented, you know, when you're working within a, a regulatory context, usually. And so, so we took a, a real world business perspective and said, if you want to build real world applications, you have to solve all those problems. And so, so we submitted a, a privacy application that's very broad. Like it, it almost is just privacy and blockchain um, and submitted it you know, many years ago. And um, the, the first PCT application, the kind of international um, response um, that, that we got on, on our PCT submission was that nobody else had done it. It's really like nobody else thought about doing privacy in a, in a blockchain context, you know. So, and, and we've since had our, our, our very broad privacy patents issue in EU and Japan and Singapore, you know, like, you know, kind of global places. And so that's a good example where we were, we were taking a real world business approach from the beginning that other people weren't. And, and I think, you know, the other thing that's kind of at play here is, the blockchain space, ironically, being being an anti-establishment type of you know beginnings, ironically, is a very kind of follower type of space. And and I found that people say, oh, this is the way things are done, right? Um, and so so by taking a, a different approach, we we took the original Bitcoin white paper and and took the things that were brilliant in it, you know, that that said any two parties can independently transact. Um, anybody can independently audit the entire chain. Any anybody that does independently transact can independently audit their transaction. Um, you know, and, and remove trust. Um, you know, from from financial transactions, things like that are. I mean, that that's the brilliance of of Bitcoin. So we, we took those kind of core philosophies, but then we said, if you want to make something work in a real world business case, and you, and you want it to be able to scale. Um, we, we, we chose some different design criteria and, and in doing so, the sharding approach where you have different, sh different uh, blockchains that all coordinate versus one main net, that, that's the big, that's, the, that's the, the insight that gave us this ability to solve problems that other people couldn't. You know, all, all, almost all the other blockchains out there have one master um, record of truth for everything. And if you think about it, like a little bit, who cares if a crypto kitty is on the same blockchain as um, a carbon credit, right? Like they don't they don't have to be on the same chain. Um, and so so our insight was, why don't we build different chains for different applications? But then when you need, let the chains interact. And so 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 that was the the insight that that allowed us to hit these 
you know massive numbers that other people haven't been able to get and then and then the innovation was the the way that you make those chains you know, talk to each other our cross shard mechanism so that was the, the real invention that that you know i think is really going to drive us into one of the premier blockchain companies we had a really good question and then we'll jump back over to the game web zombie says speed usually comes with centralization how centralized is it so um there again when you look at kind of things that are important in the blockchain space and things that people have kind of accepted as like oh you need this or this or this it's it's you have to keep in mind it's based on assumptions right so like one person said well how many nodes do you have well nodes are important when your philosophy is one main net that everybody can run right because then then you have things like 51 percent attacks and and you need nodes many nodes to prevent 51 percent attacks but if your philosophy is different it's like ours where each shard is built uh, towards a particular application then then you have different assumptions and you have different requirements to make it successful so i, I just want to make that point so so one of the big you know uh design criteria that we decided on that's different from what else is out there in the space is we have a permission system. So, so for any given shard, we say these are the entities that can run that shard. So Bitcoin, anybody can come in and be a Bitcoin miner and run Bitcoin. Like if you're a Bitcoin miner, fundamentally, you're contributing to the consensus, which adds blocks to the blockchain. You're part of what is running Bitcoin. But if you say anybody in the world can come in and run one big mainnet, that's an incredibly difficult design criteria, right? Um, and Bitcoin's brilliant in the invention of proof of work, which is an amazing algorithm. I mean, it's, it's just brilliant. It's an algorithm and, it, and it's a brilliant algorithm. And if you would have at the time said, we're going to create a system that anybody can run, including people who want to cheat, but the people who want to cheat won't be able to, you know, like, you know, good luck with that. Right. But they did it, you know, but. They, they, they did it around this design criteria that anybody can come in and run it. So when you do that, that's there's costs, right? And that's where we can be millions of times less energy efficient. We can have, um, you know, millions of times less cost, millions of times more scale. And, and I also would argue it's not needed to let anybody come in and run a, a blockchain. So, so to answer the question, um, is it centralized? It's, it's centralized in its governance per shard. Each shard is determines who can run the shards. So if a, a group of network or a, a group of music, music uh, uh, companies came and said, we want to build a, a, a music uh, blockchain service, we could set up a shard that all of the big players in the industry run it, right? Or if we, in our case, we're, we're building also environmental applications, ESG applications. In time, I'd like all of the world's big companies to, to run our environmental um, shards so that we create trust across the world. Um, but you know, different applications have different needs. But then there's also a difference between decentralized governance and decentralized operations. So when it comes to decentralized operations, where you have many different nodes running a system, and then you have uh, Byzantine fault tolerance, where you know if some of the nodes become corrupt, the system still runs, we are decentralized in our operations. So the overall to answer the question, we're decentralized in our operations, we have permissions governance, um, but permission governance is um, a better solution for how most real world businesses want to run. So those are kind of the the, the stakes in the ground that we, we, we built our system around. Yeah, and what's often not talked about in blockchain is there are certain industries that cannot work on a permissionless system like healthcare and health data. There are regulations for privacy that you can't have information about a patient in, say, Wyoming in the United States be stored, not even in another state, much less like another country. And so that kind of data cannot go on a permissionless system unless they change not only rules in the United States, but other countries. And so yeah. those are first make, really going to go to a permission system. I'll make one more point that mm -hmm. once things are up and running, no one's really going to care. Right. Um, you know, I think people are going to care about transparency um, yes. and auditability. Those are those are key critical things. But um, like Axie Infinity, you know, their their Ronin blockchain was permissioned also. And and people didn't care. Right. As long as you're you're playing, you're earning the things, you're able to sell them, you're able to earn money. Um, you know, as long as you have a system that's running and doing what you need to do, you know, people people don't care. There's and a lot of the big gaming ones are permission, right? Because Immutable X is permissioned as well. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. let's jump and over. Is a good example where you need the throughput that, you know, a, a better design requires. So, 
Yeah. Now, do you mind if we jump back into the game? Because I'd love sure, for yeah. the viewers to see like the Roblox portion of it too. Yeah. So also put those up. Sure. Um, yeah. So here, let me uh, share my screen again. Okay. So here is um, our uh, Heptone Battle game. And so again, you've got all these different kinds of lit pets that you, you get. Each lit pet has um, uh, defense, defense and attack. Um, it's got its release level, like at what level it comes into the game. So you almost might think like, oh, a level five is better than a level one, but that's not the case. It's it's built on your strategy. Sometimes you want to get a lot of characters out early. If they get out early, they're less powerful, but you can overwhelm you know your opponent with uh, just kind of an early release deck. Um, or you could have a couple characters that might have a power like uh, push, for example, that push characters back, give you more time so that you can get your your better characters out. Um, and then and then you you want to you have characters across each branch of magic. Each each lit pet um, has its place in the um, in in kind of the magic system. In and so one of seven different branches of of magic. And then then once you've created a deck, um, you can you know, go in and, and play. So um, so again, here a level two character can come out. And so here I've got this guy. He has a focus power, so he lets other characters come out more quickly. Um, so here I'm going to put this, and this character can fly, so he can come out more quickly. I'll do a push that pushes these back, and he's got ranged attack. So now you have kind of more of a tank character and then a ranged attack character. Um, this character is more powerful and ranged and has frenzy, which lets him attack faster. I'll put this guy here so he'll move forward and become kind of a tank for this uh, distance character. I'll get people on this third line as well, and so this is this is the first round, and it's usually pretty easy. So, um, and so you know you kind of go through, and there's there's people who have played in our community that have got up to level. Um, so here's round one; they've got above round fifty. I can't get anywhere near <laughs> that, you know. So um, there's people who have really honed this. Actually, there's, you, you can slow down the time. There's people that play at um, like one quarter. Well, it's like one tenth speed. Um, so it runs super slow, but you can just really optimize, you know, exactly what's what's going on. So so that's a really fun game and ties in with the NFTs. The NFTs are crafted on a smart contract on chain. Um, so now now let me let me um, let me uh, go back, and um, I'm going to go into kind of our new lit land worlds. And the new the new lit land worlds are a new category that we're really expanding on now, and it's going to be really exciting. <laughs> Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold this week that I'm getting over. Okay, so here's um, here's lit land, and so so I don't think I have any blocks. Well, let me see if I have any creos in this account. So the items for this, how do you get the items to use for building in this? Is it through the mining part? Um, well, so you'll you'll go through and you'll do um, uh, quests a lot of times to get the items. Some of them you can craft later. Let me see if I've got enough dirt. Yeah, I've got enough dirt. I can create some. Um, so some some items you can craft. Uh, so there, I just created uh, fifty dirt creos. Um, all right. So you got to take the the dirt, and then you've got to craft them into like blocks that you can then use for building. Yeah. Yeah, and so so I crafted um, uh, dirt, uh, dirt blocks. But then there's all just like Minecraft, a bunch of different kind of blocks you can create. And then and then this this is called a hollow land, and hollows H O L L O W's, um, not hollow like like three D, but hollow like uh, in in the Litcraft lore, um, those are uh, like tunnels, magical tunnels that transport energy or matter or information or things like that. So as you create this, this like a house or a store or something, it'll, it'll mirror it in a, in a shared world called uh, lit world. Um, and it's a cube, a gigantic cube planet um, that you can run around on and you could, you could buy some land on it and then you put your stuff in it um, in order to, um, to, to actually build, you need a, any level uh, pickaxe tool. 
So let me um, let me grab one of those real quick. Uh, oh, I got it. Well, that's fine. I'll just collect. I'll collect a level nine. Um, okay, cool. So now I'm going to go back into Litland. And now I've got in my inventory a level nine pickaxe. Okay, so now what you can do is you can select your Creos and then it'll it'll actually go and 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 build them. Just like just like Minecraft, wow. right? You know, and so so you can um, you know build stairs that you, you climb up and stuff. Okay. And then you can you can go into first person view if you want. Right. So for those watching this, did you know that there was a Minecraft type game already on the blockchain? Yeah, right. Um, and then one of the things we're going to add, we've got all this built where you can do the Minecraft stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a like a tunnel over here, and then you can dig in this, and you can go down to a massive like mining underground area. And then then what you could do is you can. Um, uh, get rid of blocks, you know, so oh, you have uh, to select the pickaxe and then you yeah, can you select the pickaxe to, you know, get, get rid uh, of them. Yeah. Yeah. So I can make my little blocks like that. Um, and then, and then we've got over here. Uh, oh, and then you could, you know, change, change your character, um, you know, so you could make it a, uh, uh, you know, female change your, your skin color or whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, and then over here, we've got a game that's a phasic tower game is what's called. And so you can go in, it's a first person shooter. And so you battle, uh, you know, uh, different phasic creatures. And a lot of the storyline in this is around this phasic incursion. Um, and then then there's these other portals. Oh, and we've got a whole new space um, area as well, where you can run out into space and fly around and mine and then battle in space. Um, here, I'm going to go into um, a land called Oak Harbor. And so it, it's the, the, the Litland game overall is kind of like, um, I know there's a short, you can, you can run through this forest to get to the town, but there's kind of a shortcut this way. Um, so the, the overall Litland, um, you know, game is kind of like, uh, that TV show Westworld, um, where you, where you, they, they have these different themes that you go in. So this, this theme is like an ancient kind of fantasy theme and it's all within the Litcraft lore. Um, and so, so you can come around and, uh, um, you know, it's got the kind of graphics that Minecraft and Roblox has, for example, you know, two of the most popular games in the, in existence right now. So you've got this castle that you can go around, um, and you could find some quests, um, you know, there's, there's lots of different things you can collect. Um, I don't know if we have the, let me see if there's, there's a new concept um, where there's this crazy mage. He's, he's literally insane. Um, and he starts the quest. I don't know if we have that in this build yet. Um, okay. looks like not. So he, his tower is right here and that'll be in soon. So in the meantime, um, you can, uh, come over. I'll show you some of the characters. So if you go through these swamp lands, you go to like a, a goblin land. If you go through these kind of dead lands, you go to a undead land. Um, if you go into the forest over over that direction, you you can go to an elven land. And then from the elven land, you can go to another land that's got um, a forest where the phasic incursion has happened. So you can go and fight the phasic creatures. Um, so. Here in the castle, you've got characters that you can come up to you. Um, and so uh, so you talk with Aya. Please bring me the following items for the types of blocks you would like to trade for. So there's some introduction text. I've already visited her in the past. Um, and so so here's different you know things you can use to get those Creo blocks. So if you if you want to get ground Creos, um, you have to bring 20 sand, 20 clay, five Trepresto seeds. Trepresto seeds you got to go out and, and scavenge for and find. And then a wand six. And a wand six you get in that that other game I showed, the merge game that I showed before. Um, you know, so so you can talk to different characters. After, again, some of the things that are coming up are all the new quests and story arcs and stuff. So when you talk to the mage in his tower, he'll send you over to talk to um, a shop owner back back here in the shop shop owner gets you to get him a pet you know which you craft in the main game 
and then um and then once you got that you get a shovel and then you can go meet with um a character in the undead land and the character in the undead land sends you on a bunch of quests that you you ultimately get a phasic weapon and then you can start doing the phasic quests where you you battle the phasic creatures and stuff you can also go into um a, a land that so again in the in the Westworld themes we have a space theme that's its own set of quests and story arcs and stuff. Um, we've been putting a lot of those together, and then and then there's a so the the again the the overall lore of the entire game is based on Litcraft, which is a sci-fi fantasy universe, and this in the sci-fi fantasy universe the the um, the idea is that there's mages living on Earth among and they're called the Lit. Um, because they light their powers from generation to generation through a, a special mage called a flame, um, and then and then they refer to people that don't have magical powers as unlit. So we, you know, all watching, you know, Rain Rain's crypto podcast are unlit, and, um, and 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 so mages play this game, and so they they can go in and they can interact in the unlit uh, land and the unlit land. Is, is our land, you know, our, our, our reality, our world. Um, you can, you can solve murder mysteries and things like that. So there's a whole bunch of different, you know, themes and just tons of more content. Like we've been adding a lot of content quickly, lots of new quests coming out. So just tons of stuff that you can do in 3d. Um, here I'm making my way back around the, the way I was going before. So, yeah, so that, I mean, that's a pretty good, you know, sampling of the, the different types of things you can do you know, in, in Litcraft, but it's got a full 3D world. It's got building like Minecraft. It's got all sorts of casual games. And then the, the biggest thing we're working on right now, well, two two things I'll, I'll, I'll mention. Um, one is we're putting together this uh, application called uh, Lit Legion, where you'll be able to do real world tasks like tweet, you know, to earn. And then all of those fit into this digital financial ecosystem. One of the things that we recently did is we, um, uh, we paid for $10,000 worth of ocean cleanup, just as kind of a simple test. And I th I'd like to see it expand into million, many millions of dollars, um, where we're literally removing plastic out of the ocean. Every time we remove a ton of plastic out of the ocean, um, we get uh, a, a number of plastics tokens that become part of this digital financial ecosystem, and you can build a business around it. So, so as you build that business, and you're and you're in this virtual digital financial ecosystem. It's a digital, you know, financial ecosystem. You're working with tokens that literally are removing real world trash out of the, the environment. So things like that are are pretty awesome. Um, and then then the, the 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 big technical thing we're working on right now is our uh, port to iOS um, and Android. Uh, so for mobile. And um, actually, here let me uh, let me show this. This is this is a world first. I haven't shown I haven't shown anybody this yet. Um, so. So Rain's channel has seen it for the, the first time. Um, uh, I got to find it first. Um, let's see. OK. So here I'm bringing up an experience on my phone. So this is an early version. Uh, but you can you can go in and play you know, the different kinds of earning, earning games. Um, you know, so here's, here's Litris, which is a, a block dropping game. And so. Um, Cameras reversed, so I'm. Uh, uh, so it's got the different, you know, blocks that that drop, and then you can, you know, kind of move them around, um, you know. And so that's one of the the earning games. And so we're getting all of the different earning games, um, and here it is running running on mobile. You know, for the, people can see for the the first time. So um, once we get it on mobile, then then you can have marketing efforts that really start to scale things a lot quicker and faster, and um, then I think things can just explode, you know, so. I'm seeing all the right setups. And for a lot of people, it, like we're in this crypto winter, there's not a lot of new money coming in and, and that changes. I remember Axie Infinity kind of pioneered some things and it went through this lull where nobody knew it. They were literally giving away free Axies for anybody who would play their game. And almost nobody had heard of it. And but they had something that I thought was an idea that would do well. And as people discovered it, it went absolutely viral. And I'm seeing the right building blocks with Litcraft. Like, it's fair to say in the audience that you did not know there was a blockchain game unless you follow Litcraft already that had such depth in it. Like, you had no idea that a, something like Minecraft was already on the blockchain. And, yeah. and it's, it's just crazy. awareness and that awareness is going to grow. 
Coin Coin Telegraph did an independent review, and they listed us as the number two blockchain game overall out of literally thousands. Uh, so Alluvian was number one. We were number two. Axie Infinity, I think it was number 18. Sandbox, I think it was number 17, right? So so here's here's a group of crypto experts that did an independent review, found out about us, um, and listed us really right at the top. And Alluvium isn't even out yet, right? So we're we're the top actually released, you know, blockchain game, um, according to Coin Telegraph. So so I think you know, still a lot of people haven't heard of us. Um, but I think that's gonna change. Um, you know, and and uh as we especially get onto mobile, starts being able to bring in many more people. We've got all the underpinnings for the digital financial ecosystem. Um, one other thing I didn't show was our glass block marketplace. Um, so you can buy and sell items. We've got our DevX web app where you can get on and see all of your items um, in your in your wallet. So we've got all of the pieces, you know, again, for the whole thing to just explode. And, and what you said about Axie Infinity in the, um, uh, you know, bear markets. Um, that's what I've been seeing us doing. You know, I think a lot of if, if you're in the in the blockchain space and in the crypto space, a, a lot of what you're doing as a company is timing, you know, and so um, we're positioning ourselves really to be I'd like to see us become, you know, the dominant gaming company, um, not just with our games, but with our blockchain and our sharding, many other games can come in. I've got a light a lot of personal licensing expertise, which we're working on. I'll hopefully we'll have things to announce there soon, um, where we can start bringing in much, much bigger games. So I'd like to see us become, you know, in this next cycle, same as Axie, you know, hung out during the bear market and exploded into that that last cycle. I'd like to see us become really what becomes dominant in this next cycle. So that's that's the hope. I think your positioning is perfect and the stuff that you have out and it's just awareness that people aren't aware of it. And so that awareness is going to grow. Um, yeah. Dom, and mobile mobile makes a big difference. That that's why mobile's been so important for us. Is if you want to start bringing in much bigger, you know, numbers of daily active users, you have to market. But it, you know, if you're in gaming, you know, so there's blockchain gaming, but then there's the rest of the traditional gaming industry. And and part of where we're aimed is really uh, hitting traditional gamers. And if you want to do that, you need to be on Steam, and you need to be on Android, and you need to be on iOS. And games aren't allowed. Blockchain games really aren't allowed on those platforms. And so, um, so that's where we're doing kind of a rehaul, re an overhaul, uh, where our new architecture will allow it, but we'll still allow any items you create to be able to put on the blockchain where you own. So, so we were, we're, we're kind of because we own the entire ecosystem, we can architect that it'll work. Where it'll work within Apple's, you know, guidelines, um, but we'll also allow play to own. And so we've got the beginnings of that, and that should be out, you know, soon. Yeah, that's real exciting. Tom, thank you for joining us. Tom has also agreed to stay over for a private chat with the Patreon members in our Discord just after this. Thank you, Tom, for joining our audience here on the Crypto Rain channel. Yeah, thanks, Rain. I uh, really appreciate you having me.